Hey, what's happening everybody? Timeister here and welcome back to Bixton. We're starting things off here at 300% accelerated footage and I'm going to jump right into building this massive Golden Gate Bridge here running across the Bixton Bay, I suppose we'll call it. <laughs> and it's funny because ever since I uploaded my last video, I've gotten so many comments from you guys asking me to build a bridge across this bay to connect the two cities. And it's funny you say that because that was always part of the plan. In fact, the idea of building a bridge over the bay came before the idea to build another city. So the city is just there because of the bridge, basically. Uh, so anyways, this is going to be a huge undertaking. That is why the entirety of this episode is in accelerated footage or time-lapse mode. Just because I got so much stuff going on here, I could never fit everything in one episode if I were to do this live. It, it would take like three episodes. Like, what you're going to see in this episode today is literally like 10 hours of work. <laughs> so, I put a lot of time into this episode from building everything to editing and all that stuff. So but yeah, anyways, so along with the bridge that's going across the bay that was suggested by you guys, uh, I've gotten a ton of name suggestions for what I should name the city that is across the bay. And I'm gonna settle on Auburn. The name Auburn was actually suggested by a number of you guys, and I think it just fits the vibe, you know? Just a small college town that's eventually become amalgamated into a giant metropolitan area. I really like it, so Auburn is the official name of our little college town. So back to the game, what is going on here is uh, because we have this giant hill in the way, um, excavating a mountain pretty much is is a little too much, right? It's a little too expensive. We can pretend that this road is a bit older. So what is the next logical thing to do if you can't go around a mountain or excavate the, the entire side of it? Uh, you just go right through it. So this is a tunnel that is going to run right through this hill and a lot of this little industrial neighborhood here is going to change. And by change, I mean deleted, <laughs> right? So uh, there's eventually going to become a massive interchange over in this part of the map. And you're going to see how it is built over the, uh, the course of this episode, as well as a number of other interchanges. All right, so there's going to be a total of three, well, I, I suppose two massive interchanges. And in a little bit, I'm going to build uh, a T interchange or a Y interchange, uh, which is not quite as big, but it's really cool. It, out of all three interchanges that I'm going to build this episode, this one that I'm getting started on right now is probably my favorite because, yeah, you'll see just how well it, it flows and it's really smooth and I don't know, I just really like it. This episode, I, I really got the chance to push the road tools to their absolute limits, which includes tunnels. So tunnels, of course, even in City Skylines 2, are a bit challenging uh, because you can't really... I'd, actually, you know, I'd, I'd, I dare say they're even more challenging than in City Skylines 1 because you don't see the lanes, right? Now in City Skylines 2, with highways being lane-based, um, sometimes you want to apply lane mathematics or you may want to have an exit or an entrance going into a certain spot, but you can't see the lanes when you're in tunnel mode. So you, you really gotta get up close and view things from multiple angles to figure out how like things are gonna merge together. Um, and it's, it's really not easy. But yeah, like I said, I'm gonna be pushing the road tools to their absolute limits this episode. Starting with this little Y interchange. Um, th this is nothing too crazy, I would say. Although it does look really cool because it's kind of nestled between these two hills between these two tunnels that go uh, around the hills. And this interchange is going to serve as the primary connection to Riverside. Um, so all the traffic that may want to go across the bay from Riverside, uh, this is going to be the closest entrance. Um, it's just a short drive, 
just around the mountain and uh, and here you are so this is the final product of this little tea interchange it's really cool i like how it's just kind of nestled in the hills and uh hopefully it's going to serve its purpose very well once we run the simulation and we start to expand the city And next up, I'm gonna to start to work on the big interchange. This one is going to be the big chonker. It's gonna be the one that pushes the absolute limits of both my patience <laughs> and the road tools. <coughs> but honestly guys, this interchange was so fun to build. I'm just enjoying the new road tools so much in City Skylines 2. Um, although tunnels are a bit more challenging, bridges are so much better in City Skylines 2. It's, it's like night and day. And I know I've said this before. Oh, and this is really cool, by the way. Uh, the fact that these pillars kind of automatically glow in the median of this main avenue here. That is really cool. Um, but yeah, I mean, dealing with overpasses and bridges and things like that is just so much more intuitive and, and, and natural in City Skylines too, It just feels better. But anyways, this interchange here is going to be the main connection between, I guess, the main highway running right through downtown Bixton with the, um, the bridge going over to Auburn. So I really am making this interchange with high traffic volumes in mind. You know, I don't want to have to edit this interchange in a little while because it's just struggling due to too much traffic. I wanted to like make sure it was gonna work and flow and, and function properly. So uh, this is why I'm adding wide lanes. Some overpasses have two lanes and I'm, I'm just trying to be as future conscious as possible with this interchange. I'll also throw in here that out of the 10 or so hours that I worked on this episode, probably like six of them were just making this interchange and over the course of making this interchange it has gone through like six different iterations like i would just get started on it i would put sink in maybe like an hour two hours and i would say nope this is not it it's not because interchanges have to have like a certain look in my opinion you know it's it's kind of like an art form so uh, if it didn't have that look i would just scrap it and start over again uh, but finally, you'll see how it looks by the end of this episode. And, uh, you know, I, I hope you agree with me that it just looks really, really cool and unique. And uh, it was so hard to get this interchange to look right because of the limited space I have. So as you can see, I have the hill on one side and then on the other side, I have water and I have roads going all over the place. I have pre-existing buildings. Um, I have a water treatment plant that I just placed last episode, which I actually end up moving just a little bit. You won't notice it in this episode because I think I did it off camera, but I just nudged it over a few feet. Um, but yeah, this this area, like I had to just destroy a lot of it to get this interchange to fit. Uh, but it was worth it. At, in the end, it is totally worth it. So forgive me if I'm jumping around a lot in this episode, guys. Um, so one of the big challenges of building an interchange of this magnitude is getting all the overpasses and the bridges and everything else to just fit together. And in order to do that, sometimes you have to like finagle everything together, which means like maybe, maybe moving a road over by a couple millimeters and trying that, maybe it'll fit, maybe it won't. And you just have to like rearrange everything a million times. It takes a lot of time and a lot of repetitive work. And I feel like that, it wouldn't be the best content for you guys. It would probably get pretty boring and frustrating after a while for you to watch. Uh, so that's why this episode is a little jumpy. I might be like, you know, skipping cuts and stuff every once in a while. So forgive me on that. Uh, but I guess that's just the nature of building one of these interchanges. Which gets me thinking, maybe I should do like a live stream of building an interchange. Because then I can just kind of chill for a few hours with you guys and build away. That'd be pretty fun.
Now, when I'm building an interchange like this, I'll often look at Google Maps and try to find inspiration from real interchanges around the world. For this interchange, I am using some cues from this big old chonker in Seattle, which connects I-5 with I-90, I believe. Um, I mean, if you're from Seattle, uh, you, <laughs> you likely know what I'm talking about. Um, just because that interchange is kind of in a similar tight spot as the one I'm building here today. You know, you've got a mountain on the right, you got, well, not necessarily water on the left, but you have like, you know, buildings and existing infrastructure. So it's a really, really like tightly woven interchange and it just looks really cool. I actually had the chance to drive through it uh, last year on a trip to Seattle. It was really cool. You know, the interstate system is just so amazing on the West Coast. Um, but yeah, so yeah, I'm kind of loosely basing this interchange on, on the real thing in Seattle. Although this interchange may look really cool, I unfortunately wasn't able to make it fully functional for lack of a better term. And what I mean by fully functional is when I build an interchange, I always try to see which directions are possible when you're heading into it. Meaning if you're heading into the interchange, especially when two highways are intersecting or crossing, uh, it should be possible to keep going straight, to turn left or to turn right. And some directions are not possible in this interchange. So if I'm heading into it in a particular direction, it may not be possible to go left or right. Now, I forget exactly which directions don't work. Uh, so when you see the cinematics come up here in just a minute, you'll see what I mean. I'll let you guys figure it out when you see the cinematics, but some directions are just not possible to get to from certain spots in the interchange. But that's not really a problem because I have this half parklow interchange that I built a few episodes ago, basically to serve as the second entrance into the city. So traffic is basically going to be able to utilize this half parklow interchange to supplement for, uh, for, for the lack of exits going into a particular direction. But I think it's only like one on ramp that's missing <laughs> out of this interchange to make it fully functional. But as you can see, I mean, it's a giant bowl of spaghetti. Sometimes the uh, the game engine just doesn't allow for things to fit the way we want them. And uh, at this point, I had already sunk like a bunch of hours in the interchange. So I was just thinking to myself, all right, all right, time to move on. It already looks really, really cool. And this last on-ramp that I'm building is going to merge into the centermost lane of this highway. And the reason why I'm stretching it out all the way over here is because I don't want it to be possible for vehicles to cut across five lanes in order to take this loop and exit the highway. You know, because they'll do it. You guys know traffic in city skylines will do it. Uh, so I just wanted to make my highway a bit safer and a little bit smoother. So here it is. This is the final product of this interchange. I really hope you think it's cool and uh, hopefully it can serve as inspiration for making your own bowl of spaghetti. All right, so this is the third and final section of highway that we're going to work on this episode. So we're gonna head on over to Auburn 
Now we're going to work on the other end of our bridge. And this end of the bridge is going to be a lot less challenging. And it's it's not going to be as, as crazy, I guess. <laughs> not crazy, but, you know, for the first set of interchanges, I was dealing with all sorts of crazy terrain. Not ideal for any type of inter infrastructure. Uh, but thankfully over here in Auburn, things are a bit more flat and I have a lot more room to play with. I just had to purchase a couple of tiles to get going. And uh, I guess the next challenge was to merge a highway into a regular six lane road. And by the way, as you can see, I used the Golden Gate Bridge. That was not my very first contender in the beginning of this episode. Um, I was actually opting for a cable stayed bridge, uh, but I didn't really like the way it looks because honestly the bridges in City Skylines 2 are a bit too thin in my opinion. Like for a little overpass or whatever they're fine, but for a big bridge they, they look way too thin and the, the pillars are way too spaced out from one another and I don't know, it, it, I couldn't get a nice bridge going. It No matter what I did it just didn't look nice. Um, but I just settled on the Golden Gate Bridge, and it looks really cool. It's a little cliche, in my opinion, like, I would have gone for a more generic bridge, not something that stands out like the Golden Gate Bridge, because, you know, it's, it's a famous bridge, right? <laughs> you can't replicate it. So maybe once the Bridges and Ports DLC comes out, we can take a look at what that has to offer, and maybe we can just swap out that bridge for something more generic. But, I mean, for now, it works. It looks great. Oh, and one other thing actually that I really liked about this Golden Gate Bridge asset is that it has a natural hump in the middle of it. It has like this nice smooth curve from one end to the other. That's something that's nearly impossible to do when you're manually building a bridge. So, you know, I guess that's a, another huge plus of using this asset. So for this particular interchange, I'm not really using anything for inspiration. I'm really just kind of winging it for this one. And honestly, in City Skylines 2, it's so much easier to wing it. Just to, to build an interchange, you can pretty much do anything you like, and it ends up looking pretty good. So, um, yeah, that's <laughs> I felt comfortable just building a random interchange, and to my surprise, it actually ends up looking pretty decent by the end of this. So, again, I hope you guys think the same, and uh, hopefully... It serves as inspiration for uh, any potential interchanges that you guys want to do. I guess the biggest takeaway when wanting to build an interchange like this is just to be creative. Just just wing it and see how it goes and uh, just yeah, try to, to make something that works. Um, something that I've done a lot in these interchanges that I built today is I've made some, some merge lanes within the centermost lanes. Of a, of a highway so like the lanes that are closest to the median um, I know they're quite common on the interstate I don't know how safe they are though it would be pretty weird because then you're merging to traffic that's already going like way past the speed limit <laughs> in most situations so I don't know but in Bixton they're a thing and hopefully we just don't see too many accidents if so I'm gonna cry because I just I work so hard on these interchanges
And as we approach the end of this episode, I just got to say that I'm really happy with the way that these interchanges turned out. And I'm hopeful that they're going to function as good as they look. Uh, because I'm hopeful that they're going to be future-proof for a long while. Um, so as the city expands and we get some more population in, more traffic, you know, I'm, I'm hopeful that these interchanges are going to be able to hold up. But I think they will. Um, as far as next episode, uh, well, I think I'm just going to start to work on expanding the city because for the last number of episodes here, you can see that my demand is just pretty much pinned all the way to the top. So I think I'm going to start to work on downtown a bit more. Um, I'm going to start to upzone into uh, some more office spaces now that we have some high density offices unlocked. So uh, that that's really going to get a proper downtown going. Uh, but I also have to expand the city's footprint and get some low density in there. Uh, you know, get some good old suburbs going. So I'm going to be back and forth from both cities a lot in the coming episodes to, uh, to expand both of them. Oh yeah, and I thought I should outline as well, guys, that I did fix the train situation in, uh, in Auburn. So thanks for pointing that out. I hadn't noticed in the beginning that uh, my trains were having to go outside of the city turn around on the outskirts of the map and then head into uh, to the next station. So thanks for pointing that out, guys. Um, so yeah, uh, stay tuned to the very end because there's going to be some cinematics of everything that was built this episode. And, um, you know, I can't end this episode without thanking you guys so much for watching. I really, really do appreciate it, guys. And I appreciate uh, if you leave any comments down below telling me what you think. Do you like the interchanges that we built today? Do you see any issues with them? Let me know down in the comments. And as I usually say, don't forget to leave a like, leave a comment, subscribe to the channel, and until the next episode, take care guys. Stay tuned for the awesome cinematics that are coming right up.